Hello again, my name's Chris, and today I've got something pretty fun and interesting for you. Do you remember the excellent Venus Optics 100mm macro lens for full-frame cameras that I tested a while ago, with its great 2 to 1 magnification capability and fantastic sharpness? I loved it. Well, it's clearly been a bit of a winner for Venus Optics, as they've now produced this incredibly cute little APS-C version of the lens, the Lauer 65mm f2.8 2x macro lens. Just look at it, this thing is so tiny and cute! But does that disguise a powerful lens underneath? Let's find out. At the moment, this lens is for APS-C mirrorless cameras only, Canon EOS M, Fuji X and Sony E-mount cameras. Its price will be $399 when it comes out. I'd like to thank Venus Optics for loaning me a sample of this lens for testing for a couple of weeks. However, this is, as usual, a totally independent review. Bear in mind, this is a completely manual lens, manual aperture control, manual focus although most macro photographers stick with focusing manually anyway. On an APS-C camera, a 65mm lens is the full-frame equivalent of almost 100mm, giving you a bit of room for portraits and for not needing to get too close to your subject when shooting close up. The maximum aperture of f2.8 is pretty standard for a lens like this, giving you some decently out-of-focus backgrounds. What's not standard, though, is the maximum magnification of 2 times instead of the 1 to 1 you normally get with most macro lenses. As you can see here, that lets you get far more deeply into your subject for some awesomely dramatic images. Bear in mind, though, that it gets quite hard to shoot that closely, your exposures need to be much longer, and any camera shake is emphasised too. Still, the opportunities that magnification bring you are fantastic. Well, before we look at image quality, let's start by looking at build quality. This lens is almost comically small, and will take up almost no space in your camera bag, it's so thin. The build quality is excellent though, being metallic and very tightly assembled. The aperture ring turns quite smoothly, but with gentle clicks at each f-stop. The focus ring works extremely smoothly, it turns 200 degrees. Actually, that's not very precise, considering the enormous focus range we're talking about. I do wish there was a bit more control there. But you do get a nice hyperfocal distance scale here, though. When changing focus, you can witness some enormous focus breathing. The lens zooms in a lot as you focus more closely. You can also see the image getting darker here as we focus more closely. I mentioned this happening before, that's completely natural for a lens of this type, as it's magnifying your image so much. It comes with a dinky little metallic lens hood, and its filter size is 52mm. Overall, it's a fantastically neat little design with very high build quality, although I do wish the focus ring had a longer turning distance. Ok, what's more important is image quality. I was sent a Sony E-mount version of the lens for testing, so here are the results from my 24 megapixel Sony APS-C camera, an A5100. Let's start by shooting at normal focus distances. At f2.8, image quality is simply brilliant in the middle of your pictures, with tons of resolution and contrast. Perfect. The corners are a little softer, with a little ghosting visible on contrasting edges. However, simply stop down to f4, and that stupendous image quality from the middle appears over in the corners now. What's particularly impressive is the lack of chromatic aberration. The image stays this sharp down to f11, stop down any further than that, and diffraction will begin to soften your image. Overall though, this is simply brilliant image quality, really. So long as you get the lens in focus, you'll be rewarded with fantastic sharpness. Now then, let's test the image quality at 2 to 1 magnification. My test subject is this 1900 shilling, bearing the likeness of Her Majesty Queen Victoria. Straight from f2.8, we see fantastic sharpness close up. f4 looks just as perfect. F5.6 sees a very slight softening, though. That's because the softening effects of diffraction kick in at brighter apertures when you're shooting close up, and especially on APS-C. 
F8 gets softer, F11 softer again, and so on. So from F2.8 to F5.6, we get brilliant macro results. All right, let's move on now and look at distortion and vignetting. Again, it's great news here. There's very low distortion and very low vignetting, even at F2.8. Stop down to F4 and F5.6, and any hints of darkness are just gone. Now, let's take a look at how the lens works against bright light. We finally find a chink in the armor here. Flaring is abundant when bright lights come anywhere near your picture. You'll definitely want to use the lens hood here. Now, let's take a look at Parker. At f2.8, he can get reasonably out of focus backgrounds here, and they look averagely smooth. Nothing special, but no distracting problems either. And related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration. In a lot of macro lenses, you get a lot of colourful highlighting in your bokeh, even on Canon L lenses. Well, astonishingly, there is none at all that I can see with this lens. An amazing result, making it truly aberchromatic. That will help your macro images and the bokeh in your images look much nicer. Overall then, the Venus Optics Lauer 65mm f2.8 2-1 macro is a small lens, but incredibly impressive. Not only can it get you some incredibly dramatic macro images, getting you closer than a competition, but optically, it gives an almost clinically excellent performance, except for its work against bright lights. Its build quality is very neat and fun too. Venus have done a great job of transferring all the magic of the bigger 100mm full frame lens into this baby APS-C one, so I think its price of $400 is very reasonable, so it definitely comes highly recommended.